In the last video, we looked at the idea of functions as a way to create sort of a blueprint for designing things. So for example, when I wanted to make a square, instead of just making a loop and then copying and pasting that loop, every time I wanted to make a square, I created a function where I defined making a square and I wrote that loop inside the function so that any time I wanted to create a square, I just called that function by writing the function name make a square. And all that is really great. But what if I wanted to make squares of different sizes? If I wanted to do that, I could have a function like make a small square. And then my loop could be for x in range 4, turtle, forward, maybe 20, and then turtle left 90. So that could be make a small square and I could make this be make a large square. So for every single different size square I wanted, I'd have to make a new function and you can see that would very quickly become cumbersome. But there's a way to generalize functions so that you can make them a lot more flexible and that's with the use of what's called a parameter. And I'm going to delete that function. I'm going to go back to my original make a square function. And you notice that in the function we created so far, the parentheses have been empty. But what we can do is we can what, put what's called a variable in those parentheses. And we're going to have a lot more to say about variables in the next unit. But for right now, I'm just going to put a variable called size in, that, uh, in the parentheses. And again, that's called a parameter. And you can have multiple parameters, but for right now, we're going to deal with just one parameter in this function. And instead of saying turtle forward 100, I'm going to say turtle forward size, which means whatever size gets called in the function will be however far the turtle will go forward. So down here in my make a square, instead of it leaving it blank, I'm actually going to have to put a number inside those parentheses. And whatever number that is, is going to be how big the square is going to be. So let's do one we've already seen. Let's do a square of 100. And now I'm going to go ahead and run my program. And remember the speed was set to 100 last time so it goes pretty quickly. And that's the, what I saw last time. Well, let's make, let's say I want to make it 50 this time. Let's go ahead and run it again. And I've got smaller squares. If I wanted to alternate, I could do 100 here, and then I could do another make a square at, let's say, let's say 50, let's see what that looks like. So now it's going to do two squares every time through the loop. and I can get a kind of a different design. So you can see that by changing the size of the square, I can get some pretty interesting designs. You may not have realized it, but you've actually seen quite a few examples of functions both with and without parameters. For example, this turtle exit on click is a function. We know it's a function because it has parentheses. This exit on click takes no parameters and just tells the window to stay open until uh, it receives a mouse click. We've also seen turtle.left, which is a function because it has parentheses. This, however, is a function with parameters because there's a number inside. And that number tells exactly how far the turtle should turn left. So again, this is all for the first unit, but hopefully you can see that turtle can let you do some pretty creative drawings uh, with the use of loops, functions, and functions with parameters.